uh, Duin had been granted uh, political asylum, including under the 1951 um, Refugee Convention. The threat was clearly present. Um, the threat of extradition to the United States, where he faces 175 years torture and ill treatment and so on. Ecuador um, changed government in 2017. The new government became um, close to the United States and started granting all sorts of concessions, including uh, providing the U.S. military with an airstrip in the Galapagos Islands. Uh, they sold out, basically, they received $4 billion, uh, IM, uh, $4 billion IMF loan and a, another $6 billion uh, loan. So basically secured a $10 billion um, US dollar um, injection in exchange for Julian's um, arrest. Uh, Lennon Moreno uh, was the president and he was... He basically facilitated um, Julian's um, not only arrest, but denigration over a long period of time. Julian was gagged from March 2018. He wasn't allowed to say anything under threat of expulsion. So they held this expulsion over Julian's head and created a, a climate of terror inside the embassy, uh, which I also experienced. The UK police can be invited into any embassy if the if the embassy if the mission invites them in. They didn't, um, you know, they didn't violate any law by by going into the embassy. The, interestingly, Ecuador denied that Julian had been um, arrested inside the uh, embassy. They said that he that the UK police waited outside the embassy and and um, and Julian was um, walked out voluntarily or, or something like that. Uh, they wrestled him down to the floor. They refused him to be able to take any of his belongings, which of course were sh shipped off to the United States, including all his uh, legal correspondence. Um, but what happened there was uh, the refoulement of a political refugee, the prohibition against refoulement is absolute. It is one of the strongest protections of international law. You cannot hand over a person to a real risk of torture or uh, them being killed. And that is what happened. So in, in the bigger sense, the UK authorities are complicit in uh, Julian's um, political persecution. Uh, there was a, a lead up to his arrest, of course, um, in which Ecuador, the United States and the UK authorities were all behind the scenes planning it out. Uh, in relation to Australia, I just, mm, yeah. uh, the Australian government has completely um, abandoned Julian. And in order to understand this, uh, you have to understand what the five eyes are. How many people know what the five eyes are here? Okay, so the five eyes are the security, is the security alliance between the UK, the US, Australia, New Zealand and Canada. And it is more important for you to understand than NATO. The, if you look at the International um, uh, Convention Against Enforced Disappearances, for example, it's very interesting to see how these Five Eye states align in not signing up to something like that. Um, it's a security arrangement in which uh, the Australia basically has a, a complete alignment to the United States. And it is so far gone that the Australian High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, who's sitting, uh, who sits in, in the Australia House right next to, to the Royal Courts of Justice, wears 
CIA cufflinks. It's not just a rumor, there are pictures. Look it up on Google. He goes to um, the Australian Parliament when he was Attorney General wearing CIA cufflinks and as the High Commissioner, which is the equivalent of Ambassador, um, what the Australian Ambassador is called in the United Kingdom, is High Commissioner, wears CIA cufflinks. This is the agency that plotted to kill Julian. What can we expect? They have done nothing. Take, for example, the Mexican president, who just a few weeks ago reiterated his, um, not only his willingness to grant Julian political asylum, but also had written to Trump and again reiterated to Biden to pardon Julian, to leave this case, to stop this case. He did it privately to Trump and he did it publicly to Biden. That is what a political intervention is. That is what it would take for Australia to do, but they haven't done anything. They haven't asked the Biden administration to drop this case, which is the obvious step because Julian is an Australian citizen. He's not a US citizen, he's Australian. He was not in the United States when he published this. He has nothing to do with the United States. He doesn't have an oath of allegiance to the United States, just like no British journalist should have to keep the, the crimes of the United States or any other country, including this one, secret. Thanks very much.